Before we get started, big shout out to Spidey Geek Studios on YouTube and Instagram. He decided to make some custom thumbnails for these top 10 videos and he absolutely cooked. So before you watch this video, go subscribe to his YouTube channel and follow him on Instagram. I'm leaving both of those links down in the description below. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. Hey guys, it's TF Nut. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are continuing TF Nut's ultimate top 10 figures of 2023 list. So if you guys saw the previous top 10 of 2023 video, the day before this, of course, you'll know that this was originally supposed to be one long video. And uh, yeah, it ended up being over 80 minutes long. That is absolutely insane. There's no way I could have done that. It would have been the longest video on the channel. And I know I make long videos, which I know I need to shorten them, but that is ridiculous. So I think that splitting it up into two videos was more digestible if you asked me. So yesterday was top 10 Marvel Legends of the year. I have, you know, I'm filming this all in one day, so I don't know the, the reception of that particular list yet, as well as top 10 SH figure arts of the year. And today we're going to start with my top 10 most disappointing figures of the year. Then we will do the runners up of top 10 favorites of the year they almost made it into the actual top 10 so that's going to be 20 through 11 basically and then we'll take a look at the actual top 10 which some i will just tell you guys right now some of the figures that were in the sh figure arts list they'll be in the top 10 so i won't talk that much about them since i already had a decent amount of time dedicated in the previous video for that so with that quick rambling out of the way, the thing here is that with the top 10 most disappointing figures of the list, or of the year I should say, here's the thing. I try to actively avoid action figures I don't think I'm gonna like, stuff I don't need in my collection, and stuff I know is just gonna end up being disappointing. So there are some figures that would have made this list if I bought them, if I, you know, I would have been, <laughs> I would have been disappointed if I bought them, I should say. And the number one that comes to mind is Figma Kento Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen. As much as it would have been cool to have a Nanami figure, I never really liked how it looked when it came out, or uh, the images came out, I should say. And then once it actually released, I heard that there was just so many problems people had with it, and that it just was a horrible figure. So I avoided it. There are some figures on this list, I will admit, that I was like, okay, I heard this is rough, but let me experience it for myself. And yeah, it ended up being rough. And honestly, some of the stuff earlier in this list, like 10 through 6, they're really not objectively bad figures. It's just with this list, I had a certain level of expectation for the stuff that was on here. And if it wasn't met at all, then I consider that disappointing. So some things I had a lower expectation for and they weren't met. And it wasn't necessarily a bad figure for that it's just again disappointing once we get to like the top five or even like the top three that's when it's like okay these are some s absolute stinkers if you don't agree with what's gonna be on this particular part of the list i totally understand let me know down in the comments what you think would be in here instead if i got it or not because i may not have bought it but again we're gonna be praising some figures right after this point in the video so let's go ahead and start with the actual top 10 most disappointing figures. Number 10, I'm gonna put the Medieval Spawn from the McFarlane Toys Spawn series. I do wanna say real quick that you're gonna be seeing some photos from the reviews that were taken because some of my stuff is being packed up and some of the stuff on this list has been returned. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Here's the thing about this particular figure. It's not a bad figure whatsoever, seriously. It's pretty good in some ways. It has really great detailing. I forgot to mention, I'll mention something good about each figure that is on this particular list. Detail-wise, it is really nice. It's a nice bulky piece, and it's very, from what I understand, it's very accurate to how Medieval Spawn is supposed to look. When you look at it closer, though, the paint is not amazing. It, there's a lot of molded parts that just don't look that good, and it definitely needed better paint apps. The weapons definitely needed paint apps. They didn't look very good. Uh, I mean, like, sculpt-wise, they were fine, but the paint, is just, ugh, they just looked way too plastically. Um, and also, the articulation on this thing, I mean, a lot of us knew it was going to be pretty bulky, but I do think the articulation gets in the way of this being a little bit better of a figure than it could be. Not god awful. I just feel like that with this particular design that apparently Todd has been wanting to make in figure form, like remake for a while. I just feel like they could have done better. Number nine is going to be the DC Multiverse Robin that we got. Uh, here's the thing. 
definitely not a bad figure like I keep saying. I had some good things to say about this figure in the review. It's just that the more I hung on to it, the more I realized, man, I really should have gotten the gold label version instead. Definitely not a bad figure. I don't really like whatever expression's going on with this head sculpt here. But it has a lot of really nice details and sculpting. It's pretty much, the, uh, pretty much the exact same figure as before. I do wish he came with actual like fists. And I think it was a little bit difficult for him to hold his staff. But, I, you know, there's really not much for me to hate here. I, You know, in person, I think that this is a little bit of a lighter green compared to what's going on here. So they're not super accurate. The cape was actually done really nice detail-wise. And weight-wise, it's not too heavy. So yeah, definitely not bad. It's got its, you know, Toddisms, I guess. <laughs> I should, just, I don't really know if I should say it like that, but uh, you know, some things with the DC Multiverse line that aren't perfect about these figures that are just kind of shared across the board. Like some, just the way that these are designed, the articulation is not amazing in every single figure, unfortunately. This one especially. Uh, again, just it's not bad at all. I just wish they did a little bit more with the accessories, mostly just some extra fists. And I just kind of wish I got the gold label version. Number eight is going to be the Hasbro Dungeons and Dragons Golden Archive series. R.A. Salvatore's version of Dritz from the Legend of Dritz novels. Here's the thing. Uh, you know, earlier I said that in the criteria I had to review these figures. I did not review this because I purchased it. Uh, you know, I kept the pre-order. I forgot to cancel it. And then I had it in my hand. And I was like, wow. There is not much different about this compared to the previous one uh, that came with the Panther there. I forget the name of it right now. Uh, you know, it has some new parts, but it did not look that good for me to keep it for 30 bucks. This was a $30 figure. You can get it for a little bit cheaper now on Amazon for 26 bucks. If you didn't have the previous Hasbro Pulse exclusive Dritz 2-pack that came out like almost three years ago at this point, uh, then yeah, this is a good option for you, and you can even maybe use some of the parts from the new Dritz for you know different fantasy kit bashes and customs if you wanted to. I just didn't think it was all that great to keep in my collection, and it definitely was not worth the price that I had for it. I didn't review it. I probably should have, so it's kind of weird that it's on this list, but... I just didn't really like it, so I wanted to put it on the list here. Number seven, I got to give it to the Marvel Legends series, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 version of Star-Lord. Again, not a bad figure because what they do have new here is really nice, and the reused parts from previous Star-Lord figures from the MCU. Uh, pretty nice stuff going on here. The head sculpt wasn't too bad. I definitely think better this time around than the Thor Love and Thunder version, which I think actually was in last year's most disappointing uh, list that's kind of sad for <laughs> poor star lord but i just don't think it's that spectacular of a figure it really isn't that necessary of a purchase to me i am way more happier with my 2017 mcu star lords than with this one here again not god awful because they did some nice things going on here but i just didn't really like it that much to keep it number six is going to go to the marvel legend series target exclusive astonishing ant-man so yeah you just saw the two marvel legends figures i was not putting in the top 10 list at all here's the thing is that a lot of people like this figure and that's totally fine there's good things about this figure because the head sculpt is really cool and the overall body and paint deco with this particular ant-man works really well this is a nice body for ant-man but to me this figure highlights the exact problems i have been having with hasbro's marvel legends line for you know like a better part of a year a little over a year at this point they are just not giving us enough bang for our buck. This was $25 and it came with only an extra pair of hands. We've gotten Ant-Man figures before that have come with small ants. We've also, uh, I think that was the MCU version, but also small Ant-Man minifigures. This just came with hands, no alternate head, which again, the head sculpt's nice, but you know, just give us what we have with this head sculpt underneath the mask and just make another head that's unmasked. No, like literally anything just throw in like effects pieces that you've already made before i would have liked that but they just it's not good enough i think for what hasbro marvel legends line should be doing and it just really bums me out i know i sound like i'm a little over exaggerating about this particular figure but it really made me not like marvel legends that much this year to where i just don't know if i'm gonna get that many more in the future 
Number five is going to be the SH Figure Arts Hell's Paradise Sigiri. We are at the point of the video here where it is the Tamashii Nations Roast section. The top five here, I'm letting you guys know, is inhabited completely by SH Figure Arts. I really like some of their figures this year, but they also really dropped the ball in certain areas where they just shouldn't. They made way too many mistakes in this line this year, if you ask me. And... This right here is not a god-awful figure, but it does have some problems with it. I think that the overall look is spectacular. It looks just like her, like she came out of the anime. So I can't really argue with that. And we all knew that these legs were going to be baggy, like with you know some of the Bleach figures. I, was, I came to terms with that. I didn't know some of the problems were going to be this bad, though. The glossy finish on her to where it's just way too glossy in a lot of areas is not very good on this figure. This just being way too loose to where it's almost like a QC issue, that's, yeah, not very good at all. So, And it's just, it, this head shouldn't be loose at all. You know, her torso articulation isn't great. I know it, you know, the design of the character gets the way of that a little bit. The thigh rotation, though, that's that's really bad, man. That's, that's, that's pretty horrendous. So I just was not as impressed with this figure as I wanted to be. I got this one a little bit cheaper off Hobby Genki, and this is a rather expensive figure on different uh, retailers. Uh, you know, the, uh, the other uh, accessories I forgot to mention, they're all really nice, too. Most of the articulation in this is pretty good. Um... So there's not much to hate about this figure, but I just wish it was better. Number four is going to be SH Figure Arts Boy from the Future Trunks, the new updated Trunks. Look, guys, a lot of people may like this figure, but there are some certain problems with it. I don't hate this figure at all. In fact, there's some really nice things about it. You know, most of the face plates and all that, they're really fantastic. I don't think I actually have anything wrong with the different heads. It's a really nice looking piece. The overall body here is fantastic. This update was much needed in terms of sculpt, paint, and detail. Uh, it's just really loose here. These are real like, jitter, man. They just, the legs should not be this wobbly. The arms pop off way too easily. So when you're trying to do sword holding poses, it just doesn't want to do any of that. So. You know, it's just not a very fun figure for me, at least, to pose around. It looks fantastic. So, you know, there's that. I was rather excited for this particular figure, which is why it's a little bit higher on the list. Again, this one here is not really an objectively bad figure. It just has some bad design choices to it. You know, I wanted to film this part with very little problems that I could, but number three, SH Figure Arts Kid Naruto. I'm going to say this one last time, guys. And this will be the last time I ever say it, because I'm sure you guys are sick of me saying it. Metal should not be used for any kind of joint in an action figure. And metal should not be being, uh, being placed into plastic for that articulation. This is my second Naruto, and the wobbly leg, you know, all this is worse on this second Naruto than the one that I reviewed. And, I mean, this one seems fine here. It's a little tight. Uh, a lot of you knew what was going on with this figure. Uh, at least when you may have saw my review. There's at some point when you rotate this leg because... Please focus. When this rotates at some point and then, like, you can feel it coming undone, then the, the, screw, the screw won't go back in. It's bad. This is bad design. The Vietnam figures... For the SH Figure Arts line this year have been extremely disappointing. Very lackluster quality control. Uh, yeah, the rest of this looks fine. I think that they kind of have a little bit of a glossy finish again on here. It's just like, I hate to keep saying it, but a lot of Vietnam figures look like bootlegs. And they just shouldn't. This isn't as bad as like power, I would say. But it's uh, this should have been way better. And I know it's a $35 figure, but this is just... I can't put I can't put it back in. Uh, this figure is not good to me. Number two is going to be SH Figure Arts Guts from Berserk, the Berserker armor version. I uh, look, I'm trying not to sound like some kind of contrarian, okay? A lot of people like this figure, and I totally get it. I was super hyped for this figure. I was super hyped when I was able to snag a pre order right before it came out again on Hobby Genki because the pre order for this was really hard to get. So I got this in time to review it, and I, that was super hyped. 
once I got it in hand, you know, I was digging it a lot. It wasn't until the articulation section of the review where things just, it went down the drain. Yeah, a lot of you know what happened during the review. The crotch section broke apart, and yes, I can glue it back together, but it's really not that easy of a fix when you consider all the different moving parts around the waist and crotch area. The pouch that holds the crossbow on the back, that breaks off for a lot of people. The proportions are a little bit off on this figure. I think the arms are just way too long, if you ask me at this point. I just can't unsee it. I'm sure, you know, that's how he's kind of drawn to have longer arms, but I just, it really bugs me now. And his feet are too small. Speaking of the feet, the feet break off on some people's. Lots of breakage of other accessories and just different parts of this figure on, you know, that I've seen of people on Instagram and elsewhere. There's just a lot of problems with this figure and it sucks because this is one of their best painted and sculpted figures i have ever seen in this line it just sucks that it is ruined by some of the worst quality control for a particular figure i've seen some people don't have any kind of problem with this figure and that is totally fine i had way too many problems and a certain amount of people also had problems it should not have happened with this figure whatsoever. And my number one most disappointing figure of the year is going to be the SH Figure Arts One Piece Zoro Raid on Onigashima version. Here's the thing, Guts almost made it to number one because I was super bummed out by that figure to where I was just so sketched on Tomash Nation's quality moving forward. The thing is that I've seen a decent amount of people have Guts and they don't have any problems. So at some point, Tamashi Nations had a, had a secure guts that was released. Um, I didn't have that, and a lot of people didn't have that either. However, everyone's Zoro was bad. This figure is just so poorly designed and engineered. I don't know how, I, I know how it got past, you know, QC because they don't care about QC anymore. It's quantity over quality this figure really showed it nothing is secure about this figure a lot of the joints keep popping out around the arms as well as the hip area and the stomach area the fact that okay we knew that the the, the skirt piece was going to be a soft plastic and you can pop off that piece by you know popping it out at the, you know, separating the figure at the stomach removing the skirt piece putting in soft goods no brainer however underneath all that there is a hard plastic crotch area that prevents the figure from kicking forward at all so then you have to go in and mod that to where you have to cut that and then something could happen if you snip something on accident this, this figure is just so poorly designed i don't know how it i just don't get it it's just i how did they mess up a character like this that badly what I will say about my particular figure is that I really didn't have any paint splotches. This figure looked really fantastic, if I gotta be honest. When I had it in hand, it looked really cool. And most of the accessories were really cool. I do wish that we had an alternate faceplate for the actual bandana head sculpt. Other than that, it does have nice looks to it. It's just the, the bad stuff about it really outweighs the good. It's so disappointing. And I'm just hoping an East Blue version is infinitely better than this one. Okay, now that TF Jerk is gone, thank God for that, we are now getting close to what I thought was the best that came out this year. Before we do, though, I did want to take a look at the runners-up 20 through 11 here. These figures were really close at some point throughout the year, getting really close to the actual top 10 but they unfortunately just barely missed it. They couldn't quite make the cut, but they still deserve some recognition. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with number 20, the Marvel Legends tracksuit mafia figure. I already talked about this in the Marvel Legends section, but really quickly, it's a great army builder. One of my favorite army builders that has ever been released in this line. And for the price you're paying, honestly, it's not that bad of a deal because of all the stuff you're getting. A lot of reused parts here are done really well to where I don't mind that they're reused at all. And what new is here is really fantastic. Number 19 is going to be the Ultimate Captain America from Marvel Legends. Again, such a nice figure. I just wish that the shield was done a little bit differently and the paint could have been a little bit better on my particular figure. But overall, the sculpt and paint 
in most areas is still really good. Forgot to mention again, the articulation of the torso isn't great, but it's just such a fun figure to mess around with. It's such a great looking Captain America figure. And you know, before I purchased this, I was like, do I really need another Captain America? I'm glad if this is my last Captain America I've ever purchased, like seriously. Number 18, I'm gonna give it to the Marvel Legends series Extremist Iron Man. Again, just such a fantastic looking figure. The unique body mold on here is really awesome. A really nice update to an already pretty good Marvel Legends figure. Duh. Looking at it now though, that one was pretty dated. Again, this one's not perfect. I think the red could look a little bit more metallic. I think that it just looks a little too plasticky and glossy in the red areas, but the gold on here is fantastic. Most of the articulation besides a little bit of the you know, hindered torso is still great, and the accessories that we do get with this are fantastic. Number 17 is going to be the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Nightfall version of Batman. Really surprised that this figure got as high as it did. Not that I thought it was going to be bad, but just overall, I'm not really that big of a fan of this line, but I don't own that many figures in this line. I can say confidently, though, that this is probably my favorite out of the whole line. It's such a nice looking Batman figure. All of the articulation and sculpt work on here is really great. The proportions are really awesome. I think the upper thigh swivel, again, could be better. They just never really are good with that, unfortunately. The accessories that we do have here is, is still pretty nice. I think it maybe could have come with a little bit more, but this, it's just such a well done piece. So solid, pretty basic, but at the same time, they, they got it down so well that I don't mind how basic it is. And it made me wish that this was in the Marvel Legends scale so it could fit with my six inch collection. That's how good it is. Number 16 is going to be the SH Figure Arts uh, Ichigo from bleach thousand year blood war version here so yes he did not make the top 10 sh figure arts list however i still wanted to give this figure some recognition because i really like this figure a lot actually a lot more than i thought i was going to i think that this is a pretty underrated figure if you ask me not perfect some of the soft plastic areas like his skirt could be a little bit better and i know that the bagginess in the pants a lot of people didn't like that i get it but man, everything that this figure needs just looks really good. You know, all the different accessories are, are awesome. The articulation for the most part is really great. Details and sculpting are fantastic. And I do wish we would get a classic version. It seems like they're kind of going in that trend, like with the Naruto and One Piece line. We're getting like, you know, early versions of the, uh, these characters. I'm hoping that they do the same for Ichigo because I would love an early Ichigo. But this one here, is still a really nice figure. Number 15 is going to be the SH Figure Arts Luffy from One Piece Raid on Onigashima version. Again, like I mentioned, I do think some things about this could be better, mostly the knee articulation. It's just not great, but I can't help it. I really like how it looks. All these parts here come together really nicely. I do think he has a little bit of stiffness in the shoulders that I was never a big fan of. The accessories that you do get for the price point is great, and yes, you do have to buy the other figures if you want some more face plates. But you don't, or you're not exactly strong armed unless you really want those face plates. I guess it's not a premium Bandai situation once again. This is such a really nice figure, and it makes me very excited for the East Blue version coming out because that version kind of looks like this here, but I just prefer the East Blue version more. So can't wait for that. Number 14 is going to be the SH Figure Arts Power from Chainsaw Man. Once again, there's some problems with it, mostly some tightness in the joints, a little bit of looseness in the joints as well. And that, again, the finish on this is not very good to where it looks a little too glossy and yellowish, but I just can't help it, man. I'm really digging this figure ever since I got it. Great articulation for the most part. The accessories are awesome. The detailing on here is great and all those different face plates are so good. And it's a very fun figure to mess around with. Number 13 is going to be the SH Figure Arts Chainsaw Man Samurai Sword, AKA Katana Man. Once again, it has some really great articulation, slight problems here and there, mostly. One thing I forgot to mention that the like shoulder articulation isn't the greatest and they have a weird system where it's kind of like a ball joint where you can lift up the arm. It doesn't look super natural. I'll talk about that in the review. Also, the hard plastic chest kind of digging into the soft plastic stomach isn't, a, isn't uh, amazing, but I can't help it. It's just such a nice looking piece. Great detailing. 
and most of the articulation is super nice. I just can't help but really like how they did this figure. Very top notch here. And I really think that if Good Smile tried to do one, they really could not top this one. Number 12 is going to be the SH figure. It's amazing Spider-Man. The biggest thing that keeps this figure from being in the actual top 10 is unfortunately the head sculpt of Andrew Garfield that we don't get. It's not here. And I do think that the head is a little bit small and sits up a little too high. And then, you know, that crotch system with a lot of Spider-Man SH figure arts figures doesn't look very pretty at all. But that's it. That's really it. This figure has such amazing details and sculpt work. And the rest of the uh, accessories are fantastic. And it's a good thing that they compromised by dropping the price a little bit on this particular version. Since it wasn't going to have a uh, accessory that it was originally promised. It's still a really nice looking piece. I'm sure the Moth X one will probably be better than this one, but for now, I'm very happy to have this fantastic version of Amazing Spider-Man in my collection. And number 11, she almost made the top 10, guys. It is the SH Figure Arts Hell's Paradise user rehab. I'm pretty sure the reason why she just didn't make it was mostly because she should have come with a couple more accessories mainly you know maybe some of her slime effects and an actual working sword where you know again her sword that she has that sheath on her back is just there she she can't remove it at all she can't use a sword at all i do think the rest of this figure is fantastic again i talked about the skin tones in some areas not being super consistent but that's really the biggest problem in, in again some lack of accessories there too being a big problem uh everything else about is overshines the problems on this figure like it's such a gorgeous piece here the articulation is great the sculpt work detail the accessories that we do have lots of great stuff going on here and it is such a fantastic piece she almost made it but not quite so before i actually start i keep i keep you know saying before i start before da, 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 all this i get it one more thing i want to mention for an honorable mention it, because it deserves it is the pop-up parade jujutsu kaisen zero rika orimoto statue Here's the thing is I really like this statue, guys. I don't usually collect statues because I'm more of an articulated action figure collector. I know that we're not going to be getting a, any kind of articulated Rika for a long time. And even if they do make one, it's really probably not going to look good and probably going to be a mess. I am glad to have this scale pop-up parade here go with my Jujutsu Kaisen figures. This particular figure is the perfect scaling with your SH Figure Arts Jujutsu Kaisen figures, even your Figma ones. She changes size throughout the series, so really any size Rika will fit with your Jujutsu Kaisen figures that you have. It's such a nicely detailed and painted and sculpted piece, and it's really not that expensive. You can get this for under 100 bucks, maybe even under 70 bucks for some retailers. And if you're paying around the 70, 80 range, I still think that's a really good deal because the pop-up parade line is a really nice value for what you do get with these statues. So I wanted to give this its flowers. That's it. We are now moving on to the actual top 10. At number 10, I'm going to give it to the Hasbro Indiana Jones Adventure Series Raiders of the Lost Ark version of Indiana Jones. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, how could you give this basic $25 Hasbro figure the spot here and not some better you know, runners up at imports? Uh, look, I get it. There are technically better figures in the runners up compared to this here. Also, there's probably some better options for six inch Indiana Jones figures that you may want maybe like the figma one even though it's kind of uh, old and not super easy to get it's also the sh figure arts one and we are eventually going to be getting the mezco 112 one so yes there's better options there's better figures this year i had to put it on this top 10 though i kept it lower here just because there are better figures of course in the actual top 10 i can't help it i have been wanting an indiana jones like this for a long time ever since black series got announced i was like what if they did indiana jones like this and i i'm really digging it it's it's not perfect okay i get it you know it, it, the harrison ford likeness is not bad but could be better uh some of the stuff going on here is a little weird you know the you know, torso articulation isn't great single joint elbows and knees this belt loop here for holding the uh, whip was never great. Also, I, for some reason, my gun holster isn't working super well either. So, you know, there's something, it just, it's not perfect, of course, but the way all this looks together, 
And for the price you're paying for this $25 figure, it really is nice. Yeah, it could have some better paint, but sculpt wise, it is really good. I do think it was kind of scummy for them to re-release this like a month later with the uh, idle diorama. So you were kind of, if you were a completionist, you were kind of strong-armed into getting the uh, Ark of the Covenant build in Artifact Wave 1 and then having to get the exact same figure for the idle diorama. So it was kind of scummy. But Hasbro's going to Hasbro. Either way, I still really like this figure a lot. I had to keep it on the top 10. Also, the fact that you know, some of these parts are compatible with other Indiana Jones figures in this line. So you can mix and match however you want is pretty sick. Number nine, I'm going to give it to the SH Figure Arts Gabi Maru from Hell's Paradise. I went pretty in depth with this in the uh, SH Figure Arts list. So real quick, TLDR here. This is a very nice figure that looks very much like how he looks in the anime and manga. I do think, you know, it's not perfect. Again, hard plastic chest. Digging into the soft plastic stomach is not amazing. That's going to happen on a lot of people. These like butterfly joints not being the same color as the rest of the outfit is a little weird. I do wish he came with some flame effects, but the articulation and sculpt and most of the paint on this uh, is really great. I think it's a little heavy in some areas, like the paint is a little bit heavy in the hair at some points, but it's still just a really nice piece and I've had a lot of fun messing around with this. Number eight, I'm going to give it to the Aniplex Plus Buzz Mod 112 Scale Tang and Topa Gurren Lagann Kamina figure. Super happy to have this in my collection. I'll, I've said it in my review, I'll say it here again, I'm not the biggest fan of Buzz Mod. I think they're a little overhyped and extremely overpriced, especially those Demon Slayer figures. But this one here, I can't help but like it. Maybe it's a little bit of bias for Gurren Lagann, but they did such a great job. Now, including shipping, I paid upwards of 120 bucks for this figure. So yes, a hard pill to swallow, but this just looks like Kamina, like right out of the anime. The original promo images, I didn't think were amazing. I didn't think it looked too much like him, but this, this is a fantastic likeness to him. Great paint and shading in some areas. Uh, well, actually, shading could be a little bit better, I guess, but most of the paint apps, like in his tattoos, the arm wraps around the legs, all of that is just extremely well done. I don't have the accessories on me right now because I'm still packing, but every accessory that he comes with, if you got the bonus accessories, uh, the bonus accessories are also really nice. I do think that this is an ugly system here, and the single joint elbows and knees could be better. But I had so much fun reviewing this and taking photos of it, and I can't wait for Yoko to come out this upcoming year and hopefully they'll announce the Simon soon. Number seven is gonna be the Mafex, the Batman here. Here's the thing, I really like this figure but I have to get on a quick soapbox again about Mafex. Their quality control could be way better than people talk about. I, here's the thing, when I reviewed this figure, I didn't notice this, but there is a canister here that should be glued onto the belt and it's just not there. I've looked everywhere throughout the review station in my apartment. Since I'm moving, I was able to try to look for it and it, they just never gave it to me. So there are some minor QC problems that happen with these figures, at least the ones I've gotten this year. But for the price we're paying for these figures, I just find it very unacceptable. I feel like a lot of people give MoffX just too much of a patch just because they like their products. And I think uh, Medicom kind of know that and kind of just kind of do what they want with the QC. I know that kind of sounds like cope, but some people will say, you just have bad luck with MoffX figures. How long are people going to use the bad luck excuse to, you know, basically justify bad QC? It's not god awful though. You know, that is one nitpick. It's just annoying that I paid this much and this piece is not there. But now that I've said that, this figure is extremely awesome, okay? It, the rest of it is so good. Articulation going on in here is not amazing. I feel like the head could be, I don't know. It's, I think it's just a tiny bit too small or maybe it's just a little too raised up. I'm not entirely sure. Hands are a little small. Feet are a little tiny, I don't know. They, I think they're fine. Slight proportion problem with this figure, but just ever so slightly, you really have to just like look at it really hard to see the problems with the proportions, it's mostly in the hands. I do also think it's not really bad, but it's weird that we kind of have a dumbbell joint going on in the, the hips here. Uh, I don't love it and I don't hate it at the same time. 
this is such a beautifully detailed piece all the stuff here looks like how he looked in the movie i don't have those accessories on me right now again but the alternate heads for robert pattinson look just like him this soft fabric cape is really well done all of the accessories all the different parts that you get with this figure almost everything you need that he had in the movie it's so awesome and the rest of the articulation is just super solid i love this figure Number six is going to go to the SH Figure Arts Sukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen. I can't help it, guys. Maybe some Jujutsu Kaisen bias here. Some of you are going to say, well, it's just a bunch of Itadori reuse. I get it. I kind of felt the same way before this came out. But what new is here is so good. Every unique accessory for this figure is fantastic. Again, I just needed to come with a couple more things that I've already talked about in my SH Figure Arts section of this video. What you're looking at here is just so well done. It looks like he just came right out of the anime. All the markings are really great. The sculpt work on the new stuff is great. And, you know, the stuff that they reused was not bad before. I do wish, you know, hopefully we'll get a more unique Sukuna in the future with the robes and all that. But it's just such a beautiful piece. Getting to the top five, and I have the SH Figure Arts orange piccolo from dragon ball super superhero the premium bandai figure here once again man you know there's not much i can say that i've already i haven't already said in the sh figure arts section this is such a beautiful piece i love the paint and shading on here i think it could be a little bit more prominent in some areas but you definitely have variations of purple almost pinkish going on in here and it just looks fantastic throughout the whole figure these boots, you know, could have some better paint, I guess. The accessories that we get with this figure is really nice. And even the uh, Gohan accessory is also, you know, f that we get with this, you know, the Build-A-Figure Gohan stuff. That is also very nice. This unique body is so good. Most of the articulation is really fantastic, save for a little bit of the torso, which still has a really good range. And it's just, I love this figure a lot more than I thought I was going to. Number four is going to be the SH Figure Arts Toby Spider-Man, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man from Spider-Man No Way Home. Once again, guys, I, I can't help it. Maybe some nostalgia blinders going on here, but I, I really thought this was a solid figure, man. A lot of great details. The entire suit is detailed from head to toe. These web lines are painted so nicely, you are not going to get that anywhere near as good on a Marvel Legends figure as it is here. Maybe when the Moffex comes out, but we'll wait and see. Again, crotch system here, I also am not that big of a fan of. Small hands, feet are kind of small, it's where he's a little bit hard to stand. Legs look a little weird. Shading is actually pretty decent here, but could be more consistent. The amount of accessories with this though are fantastic. The alternate heads, the alternate hands, all the web accessories. It's such an awesome figure. Number three is going to be the Medicom Mofex Scarlet Spider. Gosh, this is such a good figure. The biggest problem I had with it, and some other people have had it too, some weird black specks in some areas. They are a little bit hard to see. In person, they are a lot more noticeable. It's really around here, but I think the light is kind of, you know, not showing it. It is way more noticeable in person than it should be, so it does bother me a bit, but that's really the only problem I have, man. This thing is so nice looking. One thing I forgot to mention in the review that I didn't even think about is that, yes, this spider logo should be much larger across the chest, I'm pretty sure, but where it is, I guess it's fine. It looks really good, too. This fabric hoodie is awesome. All the different head sculpts going on here, different hands, web lines. The articulation, the sculpt work, yes, there it's re you know it's reusing some parts from previous Spider-Man figures, but like it was really good before, and it makes sense because you know he's a clone of Peter Parker, so I get the reuse. And a lot of new here, there's just a lot of care going into this particular figure. It's so fun to pose around. It's such a nice looking piece. It's such a standout in my collection, and I've loved having it. Number two is going to be the Medicom Moffex DC Comics Batman Hush Nightwing. Look, guys, I know I kind of talked crap about Moffex earlier, but three of the figures that I got that came out this year made it onto the top ten. They absolutely killed it with some of these releases. That I didn't even some of them I didn't even get. Like I didn't get Poison Ivy yet, but they just knocked it out of the park with some of these releases. 
This one was not perfect. I had the worst QC on this figure out of the other ones that I got, but I had that addressed with a uh, Hobby Link Japan. The back section here was really scuffed. The gritting teeth face also had some really bad paint and the bendy wire baton accessory kept breaking. So the, the batons kept deta detaching. When I got the replacement for those baton pieces though, they kept breaking off. So that's just not super well designed if you ask me, that whole section. Look, just it's good. It's so good, man. It looks amazing. This is the figure that made me realize, yeah, Mofex make amazing figures. And some of the QC can be annoying, but these are the best DC figures and arguably the best Marvel figures we're getting in the six inch form right now. Such a beautiful silhouette on this figure. The paintwork, the sculpting, you know, it seems a little basic, but it, you look deeper at the sculpting. It's really awesome. The engineering on here is fantastic. The articulation, the like all the actual accessories, even the ones that I had problems with were still fantastic. Really the only problem is that the thigh swivel isn't really that apparent and there's just still a bit of a weird gap in the stomach here because of the joints going on in there. That's it though. I love this figure so much. And at number one, it's gonna be SH Figure Arts Chainsaw Man. I can't help it guys. Sure, there may be some Chainsaw Man bias going on here. It's not a perfect figure like I mentioned. The face falling off here is, you know, not great. And also the hands popping off a little too easily. I don't like that either. They really should have given him Denji accessories so we don't have to buy another figure. I've mentioned it already before. I have had so much fun messing around with this figure this year. And, you know, time will tell. And I can't recall too well. But every year, the number one figure is the figure I couldn't stop messing around with and playing around with the most. And out of all the number ones I've had in recent years, this one might be just like topping those number ones. It's it's definitely become one of my favorite figures in my collection overall, which is a huge statement to say, but this is just how good this figure is. It's engineered so well for the most part. Again, some things are a little loose. Ties also a little loose. The articulation is absolutely fantastic. The you know accessories could be better, but what we do have here is awesome. It's so fun to pose. You can get him into every pose you need and so easily. This should not be as easy to pose as people think it is. This It's really hard to get good engineering for a Chainsaw Man figure like this. And they absolutely nailed it, man. So, so good. It's almost perfect if you ask me. Okay, so that has been TF Nuts Ultimate Top 10 Figures of 2023 videos. That was a lot to deal with, wasn't it? I do think it was a smart decision to split it up into two videos. Most of the footage was intact from the original long video. I just had to redo the intros and outros of each video you saw. So if things kind of seemed like it was a little weird with the pacing and all that, I do apologize. But uh, yeah, I, again, pacing was going to be bad either way because it was originally an 80 minute video. So this again was a really awesome, solid year for action figures. Really great uh, imports and some really nice domestic stuff too. Domestic figures really took a backseat this year, if you ask me though, at least in my collection. And there was some roughness in the imports area, but overall, there are some really fantastic figures that came out this year. And I had to absolutely just praise some of the stuff that some of these companies put out because there was a lot of fantastic stuff this year. Hopefully 2024 is going to be better. Hopefully there's not going to be that many quality control issues with certain companies, but we will wait and see. Let me know your thoughts of some of your overall favorite figures of the year, whether you like them, you know, whether some of the stuff you like was on this list, maybe it wasn't. I still would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I can't wait to watch other people's top tens and read some of the comments of some of you guys' favorite figures of the year. Thank you guys again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the video. Thank you guys for a really great year on the channel. Honestly, this might have been better in some ways than last year. Due to you know, views wise, I was just getting some crazy views because of you guys and I am very grateful and appreciative of it. I'll be making a separate video of what is to come for the channel in 2024 because there will be some certain changes, but that is for another video for another time. Thanks again for watching guys and happy new year.